Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Thank you, Ann Borgott, for inviting us. Thanks to all of you for having us. I'm often reminded that the, uh, one of the former Cardinals from New York said that applause before a presentation is considered hope, and applause afterwards is often considered charity. <laughs> so my name is Ron Freddy. I'm with the Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution. With me is Nancy Sarsevich. Uh, she is our case coordinator for housing mediation, dispute resolution coordinator. Uh, so a little bit about who, what, when, and how uh, we do things, who we are, what we do. Um, the organization I'm a member of, Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution, I am the program coordinator. It's my 16th year with the uh, program. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, worked for the post office, um, as, and I retired as the manager of human resources for Boston. After I retired, I found this job, and, I, and I've loved it ever since. Um, we're a nonprofit organization, a 501c3 organization. Our office is located in the district court at 215 Main Street in Brockton, and we're in room 207. And uh, we're a community mediation center. Although our office is in the court, we are not officially a part of the court. We're an independent, nonprofit organization. Um, what we do is we do dispute resolution, which includes mediation and conciliation. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with mediation, mediation is the process by which a trained third party neutral person meets with parties who are in a dispute and works with the parties to see if the dispute can be resolved. We do a lot of work with the courts. We do small claims mediations on Tuesday mornings. Uh, we do juvenile mediations for harassment prevention orders when two juveniles are having difficulty and one files a, a complaint, basically a restraining order against the other person. Uh, so we try to resolve those disputes before they go to trial. We also work with um, uh, civil cases, and we also do uh, community mediation as well. Um, I, Nancy is the primary uh, person responsible for doing our housing eviction um, dispute resolution mediations, and uh, I'll have her talk about those uh, herself. We also do what is known as community mediation, and that means neighbor types of disputes, uh, landlord-tenant disputes uh, that don't get to court, uh, business to business disputes, if you call up the Attorney General's office and say I'm a business and I have a dispute against another business, they don't get involved, they get involved in consumer related disputes. So we do business to business disputes for uh, companies that uh, have difficulties with each other, either products are not up to specifications or payments were not made properly or logs properly, as is often the case. Um, so we do a lot of that type of uh, complaint processing. Uh, even parking disputes with neighbors that have parking disputes. We do condominium disputes. We do family disputes. We do visitation disputes. We do child support disputes. Uh, all of those types of disputes that are, uh, involve families. Uh, we also do some parent-child interventions. Uh, when teenagers are out of control and parents need a little bit of help working with the teenagers, instead of going in, uh, to counseling, uh, they can come to our office and see if we can mediate uh, the dispute between the parent and the child. So we host a whole gamut of type, different types of disputes. I have some brochures here. I'm going to leave them up here on the table. Some contact cards as well. I'm going to leave those on the table. In this brochure, it covers all of the types of different disputes that we have. So they're here for the taping. Um, how we do mediation. Um, Mediation is uh, basically two parties agreeing to come to the office and uh, we, we schedule mediation. We also do that by Zoom now since the pandemic. We do online dispute resolution. But the first step is somebody makes an inquiry into our office about wanting mediation. And then we'll reach out to the other party to see if they're interested in participating in mediation. In Massachusetts, mediation is voluntary. Nobody can force you to participate in the mediation. So what we have to do first is get parties to agree to come to mediation. Once they come to mediation, we assign a mediator, and the mediator will work with people to see if they can resolve the issue. The mediator is neutral, doesn't make any decisions for the party, 
the process is confidential, and it's based on the idea that people who are in the middle of a dispute are often the people that can resolve the dispute with a little bit of help. The common denominator that we find in 90% of our court cases of what led people to file a case in court is a communication between the parties that broken down. <coughs> Either telephone calls weren't returned, uh, the owner couldn't be contacted, uh, letters went unanswered, bills were uh, not paid, invoice but not paid, those types of things. All kinds of situations, but the least common denominator of all of those things, those types of disputes, is that communication between the parties is broken down. So what we do as mediators is we work with the parties, first of all, to try to reestablish some communication. And what we do is once we do a mediation session, we find that about 75 to 80 percent of all cases that go to mediation actually resolve. They not all of them resolve the same day, but uh, they do resolve. We also do a conciliation program. What is conciliation? Conciliation is a what I call mediation on steroids. It's done by attorneys attorneys who have been trained by the trial court. What we do is we schedule those and we have volunteer attorneys from the Mass, uh, excuse me, from the Plymouth Bar Association. They're on our roster and what I do is I solicit them to come and handle those types of cases. Yes, sir, you have a question. What's the difference between what you do and arbitration? Okay, the difference between mediation and arbitration, if you go to arbitration, you hire an arbitrator. The parties both agree on who the arbitrator is and the arbitrator will issue a decision, okay? We don't issue decisions. We don't decide who's right or wrong. We don't tell people what our opinion of the dispute is. We are truly neutral. Matter of fact, I'm fond of telling people it matters not to me whether you participate in a mediation. It matters not to me whether you come to mediation. And if you do come to mediation, it matters not to me that you settle your case. That's how neutral I am, okay? But if you're interested in resolving a dispute, I will work with you all day long to try to help you with your dispute. But I won't make any decisions for you, but I may push you to make a decision, and it's not going to matter to me what that decision is, but at some point you're going to have to make a decision about whether you're interested in settling your case or taking traditional uh, dispute resolution processes. Uh, the same thing is true of commissions, um, judges, uh, administrative offices, those types of things. All of those people, if you present in front of them, they're the people who issue decisions. Mediators do not issue decisions. Does that answer that? Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so, I've been doing this, like I said, for 16 years, and I, I don't think that there's uh, too many cases that I haven't seen across the whole spectrum of uh, consumer-related uh, disputes. We're funded, by the way, I meant to mention, that we're funded uh, by three separate sources from the state. The Attorney General's Office gives us a stipend to handle consumer-related disputes. Uh, the trial court gives us some funding to handle court-related disputes. And this office that you've never heard of before in your whole life called the Massachusetts Office of Dispute Resolution, uh, they, um, excuse me, uh, the Massachusetts Office of Public Collaboration that used to be the Massachusetts Office of Dispute Resolution, they give us funding for our infrastructure. Uh, we have one full-time person, that's me, and two uh, part-time persons. Uh, Nancy is one of them. The other person couldn't be here today. Her name is Ursula. So um, how do people access our services? Um, people uh, can call us, and the information is on those brochures and cards. Um, they can email us, they can access us through our, their, our website, uh, and also people can walk in uh, into room 207 in the courthouse with their Monday through Friday. What do you want? Pardon? You are from, on Fridays? Yes, we, do have, we have some. At what times? Yeah. Uh, generally, we're there from uh, anywhere from 9 to 4. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much the who, what, when, where, and how, or what it is that we do. Anybody have any questions about any of that? Yes, in the back? Well, a couple of questions. Maybe if you can churches ever take advantage of your services? Do Sometimes churches? Right. Uh, I don't recall having a church. Uh, no. Well, they should know about you. Sometimes they get in a few years. That's why we're here. No, not here. Not here. Not here. <laughs> Do you personally to 
try to do that, or do you reject some things because you can't stay neutral? Uh, yes, it's actually the, an ethical obligation that if I if I find a case that I am positively not neutral about, uh, then I would have to withdraw. In, in other words, um, I, I could never be involved in a case involving a 2001 Chrysler Sebring convertible. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and there is training that you have to go through, which helps a lot with uh, learning about neutrality and how to remain neutral. Yes. Yes. Do people feel uncomfortable going to the courthouse to meet with you? Uh, some people do, yes. Uh -huh. and, and they're readily allowed in? Uh, if you were to go to the courthouse, you'd have to go through security, uh, there's a security checkpoint and whatnot. You can't bring your guns or knives or hand grenades with you. you know. So, uh, <coughs> one, one second. Um, but um, we do offer off-site mediations as well. Oftentimes we'll use like the Brockton Library or the Abington Library, the Pembroke Library, if people are uncomfortable uh, going into the courthouse. Yeah. Okay. I should think churches like um Jill was saying that would be a good place to do that. But anyway, I'm not running the show. Okay. <laughs> In the back? Yeah. Look at the third party. Could you so speak up? What happens if the third party doesn't work? I mean, if you come to mediate, if you have a problem with somebody, we come to the mediate. But what if it doesn't work? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Okay? Mediation is successful because of the willingness of the parties to settle their case. The mediator will help the parties arrive at those kinds of decisions, but if it doesn't work, where are you? are no worse off than you were before you came. You still have traditional dispute resolution tactics available to you. <laughs> Complaints with the city or the town or the, into court and those types of things. But this is what we call an alternative dispute resolution process. It's an alternative to going to court. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have a dispute with one of your local businesses, and you want to go to court and file a small claim, you're going to have to pay a fee, anywhere from $50 to $150, to file that case. If you pick up the phone and call our office, there's no charge. Okay, you can still go to mediation and try to resolve your case without having anybody uh, shelling out any money. That answer your question? All right, thank you. Any other questions? How large is uh, a typical caseload? Like how many how many disputes do you have going on? Well, we, we generally do for, uh, uh, we generally do about 150 to 160 cases a year, uh, probably with an additional 40 housing cases. Um, we we do cases like every Tuesday. We're regularly scheduled to do small claims mediation. Uh, during the week, we'll get calls from the juvenile department to uh, handle harassment prevention order cases, you know, uh, kind of an on-call basis. Um, but in terms of, I think the question may be, how long would it take for someone to schedule a mediation? Yeah. If someone were to call, uh, depending on, uh, our, we have a number of volunteer mediators, by the way, in addition to the paid staff. We have uh, mediators who have gone through our training program. I currently have about seven active mediators who come on a regular basis to the court, and those mediators are also available to handle mediation disputes that come in from the public. So if someone were to call, you could be in mediation in a couple of days or, or a week. Uh, typically what happens is when somebody initially makes an inquiry, I will ask them, have, have you notified the other party that you're interested in mediation? And they'll either say yes or no. And I'll say, do you want to reach out to them or do you want us to reach out to them? Sometimes the answer is, we want you to reach out to them. In that case, I'll send a letter to the other party saying, party A has contacted us and is interested in mediation. Would you be interested in mediation? Giving them a number and time to call and a date by which to respond to us. Some people respond, some people don't respond. So when that happens, when I do get a response, then I'll contact the parties and set up a schedule what's convenient for them. We try to do things at the convenience of the parties, not necessarily the convenience of me. Yes, please. Do you go to schools? You probably have heard what's happening at Brockton High. I mean, it sounds like they could use a good media. They could use more than one. <laughs> <laughs> but the answer to your question is, we're not, we go where we're invited. If we're invited, then, then we would go. But schools, I have, I have not had any inquiry from any school. 
I get I get inquiries from uh, housing authorities, you know, tenant to tenant types of disputes. Those are mostly our off-site mediations that we do. So, uh, how can we help you? I guess is the question. And I think that uh, if I made a statement and said that out of everyone in this room, there's nobody here that has a dispute or knows anybody that has a dispute. Would that be an accurate or inaccurate statement, do you think? Ch chances are that we all know somebody who's having a dispute, okay? A lot of times, uh, in, unfortunately in today's era, I do a lot of family mediation with, with grandparents who are now taking care of young children. Visitation is an issue. Uh, what are the conditions of visitation? Those types of things. So uh, that all comes into play. Um, some people think that uh, they need safe places to have visitation and we know where those places are. Uh, so a lot of those conversations, what I call difficult conversations that are hard to have with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, are often able to be done with the help of a mediator. I'm gonna invite Nancy up now to talk about uh, her job and, and housing, unless there are any more questions for me. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nancy Sarsevich, and I'm the case coordinator with the Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution. Um, I focus heavily on uh, housing cases. Most of them are eviction cases where the tenant is in danger of being evicted. Um, some of the cases we get in housing can be um, neighbor to neighbor, or someone's making too much noise upstairs and they get into a big dispute and they can't settle it, so we would come in and try to help them out with that, or you know, if uh, someone's parking in your parking spot and there's, you know, disputes about that and things like that, but yes? Stand up and talk because we cannot hear you. Uh, this is a lot of chitty noise. <laughs> So the, an the answer is if you were to contact our office, and we'll give you a card and a brochure, you can do that. What we would do is we would reach out to the landlord of 45 Gordon Road. That's Brockton Housing Authority, is that correct? Yeah. We would reach out to them and see if they would be willing to participate in mediation. We need two parties to be able to come to the table in order to have a mediation, and if they would be willing to do so, then we could talk about your issues and see if they could be resolved. Yeah, so we, uh, we get a lot of cases from the court system, uh, eviction cases. Uh, we also get community eviction cases. Um, when we get a case in, I'll, I'll call the parties and uh, talk to them and get a little bit of information about their situation and what's going on with them. And then uh, we try to get everybody together. If both parties are willing, I mean, mediation is voluntary. Both parties have to agree to it for it to happen. Um, we'll get uh, a time when both parties are available and we'll set up a Zoom mediation and help them out in that way. And I also have uh, a list of services, like helpful services um, that people might find useful to them. There's legal services that if you qualify do, do not charge you. Uh, there's uh, neighbor works, housing, is where you apply for a program called RAFT which stands for Residential Assistance to Families in Transition. They uh, will help financially if uh, parties are behind in the rent 
or um, several other things. I have more detailed information with me on the RAF program if anybody is interested in that. So um, if anyone's interested in getting that list, I'd be happy to email it to you if you want to give me your email after this. <coughs> um, Well, yeah, uh, eviction cases are handled uh, under Massachusetts, Massachusetts general laws. And there's a certain process that the, uh, even the judges and the attorneys all have to follow. And, and it is a long process. Uh, and again, uh, under the current scenarios, what happens is that um, if people are behind in their rent or whatnot, a lot of times judges will not enter an eviction order uh, if uh, an application for rental assistance is pending. They want to see what the results of those applications are before they'll issue a final order. No, well, I'm just saying that why does it take so long? It just takes so long because of the court schedule and the backlog and, and all of that and uh, continuances in the court. You know, people go to court. Uh, sometimes one of the parties is not prepared to go forward and the judge will grant the continuance. There's, there's many, many reasons. So. Yeah, I think that uh, we might be able to discuss it with you after the meeting. Maybe you get a little more information from you. See, if, oh, you're not interested in that. No, I was just wondering why we stayed so long. Yeah, and that, that's one of the things that we offer with alternative dispute resolution. It's faster than uh, the traditional court processes. Okay. Anyone else over here? Uh, hi. They do have a housing court, actually. Yes, yeah, Southeast Housing they, Court. They do yes. have a housing court, and they have some of their own mediations in housing court. Can walk in and get a housing court. A housing court? Yeah. You can make an inquiry at housing court, yeah. but in in, in, uh, in Brockton, there's a Southeast Housing Court, and people can file for eviction in the housing court. They can also file in the district court. So we get referrals from the district court. Housing court has their own people that handle their own dispute resolution processes. Okay, so we, once people are in that process, we don't deal with things that are in the housing court. Okay, any other questions? All right, thank you. It's All always right. very informative. Can people come to you individually? Sure. If you need to speak, you need to speak.